Oxen were used from the time of early settlements in America as draft animals and for plowing. Their slow pace was counterbalanced on rough, muddy pioneer roads by strength and endurance far superior to the horse. They were a favorite of loggers and early canal and railroad builders. In an 1805 test on the Middlesex Canal in Massachusetts, one yoke of oxen drew 800 tons of timber. Nineteenth-century small farmers in the South prized oxen for general use and still used them as late as the 1920s. Oxen drew many wagons in all the great westward migrations. To the Ohio country, Tennessee, Kentucky, the Prairie States, and finally, in 1848 and 1849, on the long treks over plains and mountains to Oregon and California. Next, western freighters employed oxen in enormous numbers, often using six, eight, or ten yoke of oxen to pull large loaded wagons, often hooked together and drawn over rough trails. Rigs of this sort, traveling together for safety, were known in western parlance as bull trains. The freighting firm of Russell, Majors, and Waddell, while they were hauling supplies for the army from the Missouri River to Utah in 1857 to 1858, are said to have worked 40,000 oxen. When the gold rush to the Black Hills of South Dakota began in 1875, one company, freighting from Yankton to Deadwood, made use of 4,000 oxen at the height of the rush. In the Vedic literatures it is stated, as far as the mode of ignorance is concerned, the performer is without knowledge, and therefore all his activities result in his present misery, and afterwards he will go on toward animal life. Animal life is always miserable, although, under the spell of the illusory energy, Maya, the animals do not understand this. Slaughtering poor animals is due to the mode of ignorance. The animal killers do not know that in the future the animal will have a body suitable to kill them. That is the law of nature. In human society, if one kills a man, he has to be hanged. That is the law of the state. Because of ignorance, people do not perceive that there is a complete state controlled by the Supreme Lord. Every living creature is the son of the Supreme Lord, and he does not tolerate even an ant's being killed. One has to pay for it. So, indulgence in animal killing for the taste of the tongue is the grossest kind of ignorance. A human being has no need to kill animals because God has supplied so many nice things. If one indulges in meat eating anyway, it is to be understood that he is acting in ignorance and is making his future very dark. Of all kinds of animal killing, the killing of cows is the most vicious because the cow gives us all kinds of pleasure by supplying milk. Cow slaughter is an act of the grossest type of ignorance. In the Vedic literature, the words Gobi, Prinita, Matsaram indicate that one who, being fully satisfied by milk, is desirous of killing the cow, is in the grossest ignorance. There is also a prayer in the Vedic literature that states, Namo Brunaya Devaya Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha Jagaditaya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha My Lord, you are the well-wisher of the cows and brahmanas. You are the well-wisher of the entire human society and world. The purport is that special mention is given in that prayer for the protection of the cows and the brahmanas. Brahmanas are the symbol of spiritual education, and cows are the symbol of the most valuable food. These two living creatures, the brahmanas and the cows, must be given all protection. That is the real advancement of civilization. In modern human society, spiritual knowledge is neglected, and cow killing is encouraged. It is understood, then, that human society is advancing in the wrong direction, and is clearing the path to its own condemnation. A civilization which guides the citizens to become animals in their next lives is certainly not a human civilization. The present human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It is a very dangerous age, and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process, Krishna consciousness, to save humanity from the greatest danger.